The film The Dirigent, the Dirigentin is about the life of uh, Antonia Brico, who was one of the first uh, successful female conductors in the world. So I did the final round and after that Maria told me, it's like, you are Antonia, <laughs> we picked you. I was like, so thrilled. When I read the script, I was like, whoa, why don't people know about her? Like that is, that's... You know, people should know about her because she's such a very legendary figure in the conducting scene. It could be f much easier uh, to finance this movie if Maria was a man, you know. And that's, that's a little thing, you know. This is also about what's the film about. The film is about Antonia Brico, who is uh, one of the first uh, female conductors who, in the world who actually conducted a symphonic orchestra. She lived in, uh, say, from 1902 till um, uh, 1989. So, uh, yeah, I think she has a real interesting life because she was a real pioneer. She had like a Dutch roots, but she lived in America. And uh, for her, it's, it's, uh, it was a very big struggle to become a conductor. And I show her when she was a young girl from, say, 24 till she is uh, 33. And you see her struggle to, to get on, on the stage with her uh, baton. And that's actually what the story is about, about the struggle of a woman in that period of time, which was very difficult, especially in that time. I mean, it's, dif it's difficult now, but it was way more difficult back then, and her struggles to become a female conductor. A lot of people will say uh, at the first time it's a, it's a love story. But for me, of course it's a love story, but it's much more than a love story. It's going about gender, it's going about uh, you know, um, uh, equality be, uh, for men and women. Um, and it's an historical movie and, uh, and it's based on a true story. So for me it's much more than only a love story. What I like about that is that if you have such a movie like that, you would think like maybe... Um, uh, like you, you could say that that would be kind of like a feminist film. But my mom did... Well, my mom is, is, is the director of the film. And Maria did a very good job into not making it look like it's a, oh, it's a woman in a, in a man's world and the men are making it very difficult for this woman. Like, it's actually, no, not only men, but also men and women. Like, everyone, the entire mindset of everyone in that time was just wrong. Nobody really understood uh, that women could be conductors as well. But it also has a, a love story in it, so, uh, which also, adds up to the problems of becoming, becoming a conductor, but also have to give up something that you really desire a lot, which is love. Mama voelt me klein opkomen. Mr. Goldsmith? Sir? Meine Eltern und ich... Wir besuchen schon seit Jahren Ihre Matineen. Vermutlich, weil Sie umsonst sind. Ganz am Ende hatte ich das Gefühl, dass Posaunen kurz vor der Wiederholung des Trios falsch gespielt haben. Sie haben E gespielt, es hätte aber ein S sein sollen. Warte. Mal sehen. Gut beobachtet. Kennen Sie die Posaunenstimme auswendig? Nicht nur die Posaune, das ganze Stück. 
Sie unterrichten doch Klavier im Konservatorium. Richtig. Ich würde gern dorthin. Na dann, viel Glück. Bitte geben Sie mir die Chance, bei Ihnen vorzuspielen. Ich verschwende nicht gern Zeit. Geht mir auch so. Dann bis morgen. 16 Uhr. I first saw a documentary made by uh, Judy Collins, who is a folk, very famous folk singer, and she made a documentary in 1975 about Antonia Brico. And in that documentary you see Antonia as an elderly lady who looks back on her career. And I saw that uh, uh, documentary on the Dutch television, I think in 2001 or 2002, and I, I thought, well, this is a Dutch lady who immigrated to the United States when she was a child and uh, so I really wanted to make a movie about her because of the Dutch uh, background of her uh, and for, for if you want to make a film in the Netherlands you have to have a sort of Dutch uh, uh, subject and uh, so I was really trying very hard for many years to, to write a script, rewrite a script and uh, I thought this film will not get green lighted, you know, and it will not go. And then I thought, uh, well, this film will never be made. And then I started to think about, uh, I have to close the subject, I write a book about it, because I knew so many things about her life. I got help from her cousin Rex Brico, I didn't do it on my own, and he knew her very well. And then, uh, but then I, I start, worked on the script as well, and all of a sudden my project was greenlighted. So then I did the movie. And so, uh, to answer your uh, question, what was first? Uh, first, it was the film, and then I finished writing the novel about her life. I play um, the role of Antonia Brico, um, and she is a very strong, ambitious. Um, woman with a lot of passion for music. Hören Sie schon auf. Atemberaubend. Meinen Sie? Dieser große Flügel. An meinem Klavier musste ich die Seiten mit Lumpen dämpfen. <lacht> Und warum in Gottes Namen tun Sie das? Weil sich die Nachbarn sonst darüber beschweren. Aber es ist sowieso alt. Mein Vater hat es während der Arbeit im Müll gefunden. Im Müll? Mein Vater ist Müllmann. Wo haben Sie gelernt? Ein Freund meiner Mutter. Was wissen Sie über Bach? Ich spiele seine Noten, Sir. Aber wie wollen Sie sie spielen, ohne ihn studiert zu haben? Wissen Sie, wer der größte Bach-Kenner der Welt ist? <lacht> Woher sollte sie das? Albert Schweitzer. Er hat Bach studiert. Ihn umgekrempelt, wie es keiner zuvor tat. Bedauerlicherweise gab er seine überragende Laufbahn auf, um Arzt im afrikanischen Dschungel zu werden, was meine Theorie bestärkt, dass das Genie nur allzu oft an Wahnsinn grenzt. Das nennen Sie Wahnsinn? Ja. Er missbraucht sein Talent, indem er es nicht nutzt. Möglicherweise ist er als Arzt noch talentierter. She really is fighting hard for her goals in life, even though there she has so many hurdles to pass. Um, but she does it and very strongly and yeah she she's a role model <laughs> she became a role model for me when i was writing the script i had one uh, actress in mind she is the daughter of a fa very famous violinist but in the end uh, and she loved the script but uh, in the end she got a very good job uh, in united states so she had to resign like i she couldn't do it and then I was really, oh, 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 I have to find a new actress uh, who speaks uh, English, like she's a sort of native American, who uh, speaks Dutch as well, but that wouldn't be so difficult, who is musical, like she had to play the piano, and she had to learn how to conduct, because you, you're not a natural. It's really very hard to, it looks easy, but it's really hard to, con to conduct the, the movements right. 
and uh, and she had to you know all had all these uh, she needed to have all these uh, talents. So uh, I had to find her. So I casted a lot of actresses, and Christiane de Bruyne. Uh, she just you know stand out uh, immediately. I think Maria was already working on this film for 13 years, and then I was I got a message on. Twitter actually from the producer Dave Schramm and he just he told me he, they were casting this film I luckily knew he, who he was or <laughs> else it would be kind of weird I was like okay <laughs> and so he asked me to self-tape doing a monologue and um, to play piano for the self-tape um, and then um, they called me and they asked me if I wanted to audition. I still did three uh, auditions with, you know, to narrow it down. I was a bit surprised. I was like, yeah, of course, yeah. So I did um, the first round of auditions and then I got to read the script because I didn't even know what it was for, really. So before the, the second round, I read the script but she stayed my favorite for a long time. And then in the end, but it was only two months before shooting, uh, she, uh, she, I, she got the part. So that was really very nice. And she worked so hard and did a tremendous uh, good job to, uh, to nail all the difficult uh, parts of the, of the role. I'm really very pleased with her. And also she did the American language. She lived in, as a, as a, when she was young, 16, she lived for a year in the States. So she had a very, fluent accent, uh, an American accent. So I was really happy about that. Warum spielen Sie so? Wieso? Als hätten Sie keine Gefühle. Weil ich lernen musste, dass sich niemand für meine Gefühle interessiert. Aber sollten Sie nicht die Musik interpretieren? Das lässt Raum für Fehler. Die Noten hingegen nicht. Das ist Wissenschaft. Bach war ein Mathematiker. Einer der wenigen, der Gottes Sprache sprach. Nun? Niemand kennt Gottes Plan, nicht wahr? She's a very, very strong woman. That was one of the things that most attracted me to her. Um, also, I, I also have a huge passion for, for music myself, just like her. So I kind of, and of course for acting. So I, I understood her passion and it's it's very as an actress it's also very hard to to be able to play the roles that you really would like to play or um so i i understood her her fight for for doing what she loves um i think a lot of people do especially women maybe um yeah just fighting for your dreams and your passion and don't take no for granted. Abgelehnt? Zum fünften Mal heute schon. Wenn man in dieses Metier will, muss man hervorstechen. Ich bekomme große Probleme, wenn ich nichts finde. Es wäre mir ein Vergnügen, dir zu helfen. Nur suchen wir aktuell niemanden. Außer einem Pianisten. I found him on the internet. I just went on a look, search for an actor, an American actor who has this, that, those qualities, and I found him on the internet. There are not, are not that many. Du bist so zurückhaltend. Rutsch mal. Lass dich einfach gehen. I asked him to do a sort of self-casting uh, tape, and he did. But I wasn't convinced that he understood because uh, he looked straight in the camera, and you know, when an actor, you know, he plays the role. But then, in the end, I thought he was the only. Uh, you know, uh, I really was really fond of him, uh, and he's an actor, of course, and he was really very willing to to do that role. So I uh, got him to uh, Amsterdam, you know, by plane, and he came in from California. And we had a tremendous good click, so, uh, and he uh, worked with Christana, he worked with uh, the other uh, leading uh, actor, Benjamin Wainwright. And then uh, all, all of a sudden it turned out these were the three best choices to make. Because I, I 
got on board quite late, I prepared for the role. Um, yeah, just I practiced every day with the conducting and also playing the piano. I mean, I'm not a pianist, but I, I'm, I could do it. I once taught it myself, so, um, and I can read music, so that helped. And then I read the script a million times. Um, I watched the documentary about Antonia Brico, Portrait of a Woman, um, which is very, which really helped me to get to know her. Um, Cause she's very, she tells her sort of a life story and, and she tells about how she experienced her struggles. Um, and I really could relate to that. So that really helped me. And I watched her conduct. There is not a lot of footage of her conducting, but there is some. So I, I watched that and like how she moves and how she stands in front of the orchestra. And then I used YouTube and watched a lot of female conductors and how they, because it's very hard conducting, it's impossible to learn in just a few weeks, but I really, really tried my best. <laughs> Eine Frau leitet 100 Männer. Was wollen Sie tun, damit Sie Ihren Anweisungen folgen? Wollen Sie lieber behutsam mit Ihnen umgehen oder durchgreifen? Und eins noch, Brico. Das wird nichts, wenn Sie schwitzen. Das Crescendo geht von Pianissimo nach Forte. Und Sie machen nur Mezzo Forte. Und zusammen war es auch nicht. So ist richtig. Sie müssen ein Taktstock die Hand sein. Kein Demokrat. It's my first film, so um, I, I really was expecting them to be like more, like, I think they, we, we didn't have any rehearsals. I, they really like gave me so much confidence and they were like, yeah, just the freedom to create this part myself. So I, I thought that was so amazing and I, with Maria, it was a, we were just on the same page. We just really understood each other. And there were just a few times we were like, with a few scenes, just like looking for what would work best. Um, but then we got there and it, the communication was really nice. And it, yeah, it was just, it was very, very free. And I, I felt, very at ease quite quickly because at first I was very scared because so this is a big project and but they trusted me and that was very very nice. Film is emotion and if you're the actors are very important to me because they are the ones who you know get that out that's their job and their talent so I have to use that and you, you are looking for that talent to, to that, that the audience that watch the movie are, you know, like, oh, okay, do I think she should be on the stage or on the, on the, on the uh, I don't know the German name, am Pult, am Pult, uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think uh, people who watch the actor or Antonia Brico in the movie uh, should think, yeah, she, she deserves to be uh, in front of an orchestra and uh, that was also a thing that I wanted to uh, to achieve that uh, I, I told Christana also like okay you don't need to do anything the people who are watching will want they want you to succeed not you you know you just yeah so that uh, was helpful yes uh, my visual concepts of the movie I, I, I talked to my cameraman my DOP and uh, Rolf Dakens, he, he works in the States as well sometimes. And uh, so he helped me a great deal. But I wanted uh, to make the movie, I want to be close uh, on her, uh, but also it's a bit sort of, sort of an epic story about her life. And she has a lot of setbacks. And uh, so, um, that, so the visual part of the movie, we, we, you know, I thought, 
I want to be close on her skin and also make movements and, you know, get the emotions out. For me, my uh, DOP, Rolf Dekens, uh, was really uh, suggesting that we should shoot it on uh, Cinemascope and also uh, Dave, the producer, my uh, husband Dave Schramm. Uh, he suggested it and I always take advice from those uh, <laughs> who are in the know. So I was immediately, uh, you know, it's like uh, a good thought. <laughs> yes, good idea. I know my mother uh, quite well. I know the music, what she likes. So sometimes I can already tell like when I create something. Like, all right, I think that this is a little bit what she likes about. And I think that a lot of composers would kind of not really get what my mother wants from music in a movie. But I, I feel like I kind of understand because I am her son. Um, that's what I think is is what really helps me. But it was also fun. Like my mother, she 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 would like not uh, like go very mad at me or like the connection is also just very natural because you know her so like we know each other for as long as I live. So <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think I, it was it was also fun uh, working with my mom uh, on this one. Yes. Well, some, peop uh, some people say sometimes it's like a family movie, but it isn't, you know. Um, we're all working in the film industry, uh, my wife and my son and my daughter as well. Uh, but in fact, uh, normally we are not working that much together, you know. Um, normally, Maria is directing and then I'm producing and then, you know, I'm not on the set all the time. So. Uh, um, and my son is working now on other projects, so uh, it's, you know, just by coincidence that we work together for this movie. <laughs> the music uh, for this film is really very important because you, you, you have to get your head around how are you going to shoot it. We don't have so much money as an, an American movie would have. I think we had, say, six million uh, to shoot the film. It was quite difficult to get this movie financed because, you know, it's an expensive movie for Dutch terms. It was around six million dollars. And that means for Dutch terms that it could be very difficult to get it financed. I wanted uh, the classical music uh, to be... The, uh, the, 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 these were the pieces that Antonia actually uh, no, I say it wrong, the, the composers were the ones she did, but the pieces I wanted to uh, uh, look at uh, as film music, as a score, because they had, it had to be uh, under the scenes to, you know, to, as a sort of emotional value. So I took, uh, I listened to all these uh, com com compositions. I have no musical background at all. So it was hard for me to get my head around that part. How do you go about uh, the music part? You, you pre-record the classical music pieces. There's also a lot of jazz music in it, because I thought the jazz music is in that time frame. There, there was the upcoming jazz, and I thought the, the jazz music is a, a way to um, open your mind. It's a new way to look at music. To, you know, at the notes, they, they can float freely, not so, you know. And uh, I thought it's a metaphor for how we think of women as a conductor. It's a sort of, why not? You know, why not the notes more freely? Why not the women as a conductor? We had to shoot uh, 20 days with a big orchestra. Uh, and the music had to be, you know, we, we re pre-recorded the film. Uh, the show before the shooting because we found out that it was completely impossible to, to, to arrange 20 days of shooting with a complete full orchestra. So that's why we decided uh, we have to do it in a pre-recording, then we can do a playback on the set and then uh, we can also uh, use not the, the, the biggest, high, uh, the highest level of musicians, but we can also do it, you know, if you do a flute, uh, uh, you can do it, you don't see it. The violin, you can see very well, because if you don't, don't do it on the right thing. 
So that was a big challenge for us. It's hard to find the right uh, orchestra because these uh, very high level orchestras are very busy. So I had only a chance of uh, one or two days that they were available and it was just two days before I started shooting. And then when we are doing the scene, then the musicians who are of a lesser value in a way, they play back. And that, that's great because I don't need to stress about how they, you know, the sound-wise, the, how it will sound, because that's already uh, uh, very, done very well by the Radio Philharmonic Orchestra of the Netherlands. So sometimes I had like a lot of extras, you know what, the, what extras are, the, the, these are people that you usually put on the background, they actually play a big part of the orchestras and I had to give them the instruments and they had no idea how to hold that instrument, how to play that instrument. So when there was an action, you just hear a lot of people just trying to play their instrument and it sounded horrible. I've never heard, and sometimes I had to laugh because it sounds so, so, I mean, I don't, have you ever heard like 30 people who don't play violin trying to play the violin? It's, it's terrible, <laughs> but it was also was fun. So we really tried to have the musicians that we got. Sometimes those were like 20 people or 15 people, sometimes only just 10. We tried to, we tried to put them on front, like the, the, the violinist people, the violinists that play well, we put them on front. So when we are recording with the camera that we see most of the musicians and these are actual musicians. And that's how we kind of had, had to trick the, the audience into this. There's also uh, film music. Uh, in the film there are two composers, uh, because uh, in the end uh, the one uh, who, who was going to do it uh, was run out of time. I wasn't the original composer for this film. There was another composer, but there were uh, issues with the time, like he didn't have enough time to, to uh, bring the entire result, so I have to kind of step in for the pieces that were not created or that were not good enough yet. So I, uh, so that was like a strange dynamic because I have to work with someone else's work and then also create my own like version of, of work in an entire bed of a lot of music with contains jazz and classical music, a lot of music. And I was like watching the entire cue sheet of the, of the music and I was like everything that's, that's in it. And I was like, this entire film is filled with music. And I wanted to create music that uh, would kind of a little bit step out of the of the jazz and the classical music because that's really part of that of the film. Like if you see jazz, I mean, if you hear jazz, you see jazz. If you hear classical music, uh, or if you see classical music, you you hear it, or and and vice versa. But I wanted the film score that is the only music that you'll hear without it being seen in the, in the, in the, on the film itself. So I, I feel like I can just step a little bit back and just go the, the film composer route, you know, and um, trying to find what my mom likes about, about music and try to compose in that, in that way. As a composer, I work for uh, uh, kind of everything. Like I can also do documentary, but also film. I love film the most. I, I have to admit, I like that the most. But if, you know, if something else comes, uh, what, what I really like, then yes, of course. I, uh, I just like to make music in general, especially when it's for something I can, uh, especially for scenes. And uh, well, film happens to have a lot of scenes that I can uh, make music for, so. <laughs> Antonia. Ich will nicht leb wohl sagen, sondern bei dir sein. Das will ich auch. Dann vergiss die Reise und bleib hier.
the great thing about Thomas Newman is that his work is so minimalistic almost. Like he can like do a lot of things with less material. And in Dutch, in the Netherlands, we don't have much of the very big film. Like we don't have Tenet, you know, we don't create those kind of films. Like so for as a Dutch person who makes music for a Dutch movie, sometimes you have to go a little bit smaller and then the the the, the style of Thomas Newman is a more appropriate approach to a, to making a score for a film than like doing something very orchestral and big like something that Jerry Goldsmith or John Williams would write like that doesn't always fit in a Dutch film. For me I, I never worked with uh, English actors or American actors so that I was a bit fri frightened that they might be uh, oh, high standard oh where is my uh, uh, how do you call these these trailers and uh, but they were the sweetest people ever. The art direction was for us a big, big, big challenge because uh, the town hall in New York looks now completely different because it was, you know, re redressed uh, on, on the outside. Uh, but uh, we rebuilt that in, in Bulgaria, in Sofia. So, uh, uh, so it was good. The, the exterior, the, the last scene, uh, we had to build that. So uh, it was really a huge uh, set. So uh, that was very challenging for me to uh, to produce but it uh, and then of course all the old cars in it you know so that was we had almost all the uh, the cars of the 30s uh, from Bulgaria uh, at that time so uh, in the film <laughs> that was very funny we did a lot of films with rain and snow and kids and, and, and animals but uh, to shoot in Bulgaria with uh, big rain scenes uh, in in the 30s in sets, you know, we completely built this set, and uh, and then when it worked out uh, in a way, uh, well, you, in your in your your best imagination, uh, and it worked out very well. So uh, <laughs> we were happy. <laughs> to call it a con uh, director's cut, that would be like I had a sort of fight with my editor, and I uh, I adore my editor because he's one of the best. It's uh, his name is Robin de Jong, and uh, he's. Uh, I, I really trust him and he comes up with great ideas and that's why it's such because I, the editing process is very interesting in a way because I write a script then you shoot a movie with the whole crew and then you start writing again in the editing room because then you, ha you don't have the chance to make new things because you should have shot them but uh, it's in a way writing again but then with the material you have and it's such an interesting uh, pr process and also in a way it's, uh, um, how do you call it, uh, you, 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 all the, the, the difficult days, you relive them, like, oh, that, uh, we, and then my editor said, do, do you have that shot? No, we couldn't have, do that shot because the, the, they had to go or they, uh, we were running out of time or uh, no, the musicians, they can't play the instrument, I just have those eight that are real musicians so you can only sh you know edit those closely and uh, in, in the, in, uh, so that was a fun part and I loved working with him yes that was great yeah nein bitte ich will bleiben ich muss ihn unbedingt sehen wir müssen sie hier raus schaffen Einem Musiker wie ihm zollt man Respekt. Sie sind gefeuert. Waren Sie es nicht, die sich direkt an den Rand der Bühne gesetzt hat? Sie? Ich will Dirigent wurde. Sie will Dirigentin werden. Weißt du, wer er ist? Frank Thompson. Er ist einer der wichtigsten Konzertmanager. Solange er mich in Ruhe lässt. Hoe lang is dit al gaande? Toelatingsexamen voor het conservatorium. Hoe lang ben jij al aan het liegen? Vrouwen eignen zich niet daartoe. Ze kunnen niet vuren. Ik werde bald verreisen. Dat gaat niet. Waarom niet? Weil ik dich in mijn leven brauch. Ze is gerade in Berlin. Berlin? Ze had voor dort dirigieren te studeren. Ik heb een empfehlungsschreiben voor ze. Ha. <lacht> ze dürfen mensen die Teil ihres Lebens zijn wollen niet einfach wegstoßen. Das ist Ihr großer Tag. Da ist sie! Sie nehmen sie niemals auf. Die Welt will sie scheitern sehen. Sie können nicht einfach weglaufen. 
wir haben eine Vereinbarung. Ich folge keiner Frau, die ihren Platz nicht kennt. Eine Frau leitet 100 Männer. Mit oder ohne ihre Hilfe, Herr Muck. Ich werde Dirigentin. Es geht ja nicht um Leidenschaft. Ganz ohne Zweifel fing sie mit dem Dirigieren an, weil sie sonst nichts kann. Es ist eine Abnormität. Was? Frauen? Es widerspricht der musikalischen Tradition. Diese Welt lässt dich nie wieder los. Wer ist diese Dame? Brico. Antonia Brico.